Holy shit, guys. 500,000 subscribers. That is absolutely incredible. Vehicle Virgins has transformed from me literally jamming my iPhone in my headdress in high school, filming videos of cars to my full-time career after I graduated college. And for that, I am so, so very thankful. And to show my appreciation, we are doing a giveaway. All you have to do to be entered in the giveaway is to be a subscriber of Vehicle Virgins. So if you've already subscribed, you've done the hard work. If you're not and you're watching this video, hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell beneath the video to stay up to date with Vehicle Virgins content. First place is a brand new Xbox One S along with Forza Horizon 3. That way, even if it's negative 20 out, you can still hang out with your friends and drive cars around. Second place is a brand new GoPro Hero. So you can start your own automotive YouTube channel, have fun with your friends, whatever you wanna do with it. Third place is a copy of Forza Horizon 3. Simple as that, be a subscriber to Vehicle Virgins, hit the bell to stay up to date with notifications, and you can win hundreds of dollars of prizes. You guys will have a chance to subscribe to Vehicle Virgins until December 26th. That is when I'm going to announce the winner. I'll send you an inbox message on YouTube. Anywhere in the world, you can win an Xbox One S, Forza, and a GoPro. So with that, here are the worst supercars of 2017. First up is the Acura NSX. It was released at the NAIAS Auto Show in 2012, and it was a very cool modern rendition of the sports car that ended its production in 2005. However, it took four years for it to actually hit the roads. And my main gripe with the NSX is how flawed its production was. Originally, it started off as a front engine naturally aspirated V10. And then they changed it to a horizontally opposed V6 as a hybrid powertrain. And then they wanted to add turbos and had to change it to longitudinally opposed. They really didn't know what they were trying to do with the NSX. And it resulted in a vehicle with three electric motors and a ton of batteries. That means the curb weight is 3,800 pounds, which is hundreds of pounds heavier than any of its competitors. It was cool in 2012, but it's too little too late from Acura. Next up, we have the Lamborghini Aventador S. This just was released, and it's a bit confusing. The Murcielago SV was released as the end of the Murcielago line, the most powerful, the most outlandish, and most expensive. There wasn't a Murcielago S afterwards. Now, I know there was a Mura S and a Countach S, but this Aventador S comes at such an awkward time. The Aventador has been around since 2011, and honestly, with double clutch transmissions nowadays, it's getting a little bit antiquated in terms of its technology. The SV was released, and it was the lightweight, expensive, track-focused Aventador, and honestly, that should have been the last Aventador. Now we have the Aventador S, which is over $400,000, 740 horsepower, and a redesigned front and rear end, as well as four-wheel steering but it's still the same basic car. It lacks the modern day technology that something like even the Huracan for half the price has. They really need to move on from the Aventador and I know that they're gonna come out with more and more Aventador models for the next five years to suck all the money they can out of buyers who just want the latest Lamborghini. Next up is the Nismo GTR. Now back in 2009, with a $70,000 base price and a zero to 60 time that shattered every other supercar that cost way more money on the road, the GTR made sense. But now in 2017, it's just simply outdated and the Nismo's base price of $176,000 is absolutely absurd. That's more expensive than a base Audi R8 V10. And the difference between a normal GTR that starts at 109,000 and the Nismo, $65,000 is so much that you could take a brand new 2017 GTR, take it to AMS, get 1500 horsepower out of it and still have money to blow. How does that make any sense? For 35 more horsepower, some aero bits and having a Nismo badge. Nissan, your car is not worth $175,000. Next is the Aston Martin Vanquish S, which arguably is one of the most beautiful cars ever to be produced. The problem is not the Vanquish, but the DB11. The Vanquish 
was built in 2012 for the new generation, and even then the interior electronics were a little bit outdated. You've still got those same electronics in 2017, but that's not the case with the DB11. It's fully redesigned. It's a brand new car. It's got 20 more horsepower than the Vanquish. It's got 51 more pound-feet of torque, a better redesigned interior, and it costs $83,000 less. So why would you buy a Vanquish? You shouldn't. Either buy a used one for 180 grand or buy a DB11. The Vanquish doesn't make any sense anymore. The last is the Lamborghini Centenario. It's a clusterfuck of a design between the Aventador, a Huracan, and some sort of alien spaceship. And it also looks kind of like a cheese grater in the front. The design language doesn't work together, and it's way, way too expensive. They made 20 coupes and 20 roadsters, all of which were sold out before anyone had even seen what it looked like, and it's $2 million. This is the second special edition Lamborghini based on the Aventador. It's got a bit more horsepower than the Aventador, and yes, it's limited edition, but come on, for the price, let's have that hypercar slang hybrid twin turbo V12 that can actually compete with cars that are supposed to cost $2 million. This is just yet another way for Lamborghini to celebrate a giant monument in their history with something that is way, way overpriced. So there you have it. There's five of the worst supercars in 2017. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be entered to win some awesome prizes. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse our channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.